as I said, I think Malcolm Fraser has engaged a new generation in his later years of people who want and are desperate for a caring community, for a country that stands for compassion and doesn't waver in the wind, even when the politics isn't easy. Um, and to illustrate that, his engagement with the new generation was how he was welcomed with opening arms from the Twitter sphere. When Malcolm Fraser first came onto Twitter, it was 2013, I think, from memory, and he was sitting in my office, actually, and he had his iPad, and I thought, gee, this is a funny, funny sight, seeing the towering figure of Malcolm Fraser in his suit jacket and waistcoat, sitting back with his iPad trying to work out how he sends his first tweet. And it went off. People had to ask whether he really was Malcolm Fraser 12, which was, of course, his handle. And that, of course, was because there was, he was at least 12 Malcolm Frasers on Twitter behind. But he didn't mind. He just stuck the 12 on the end. But he became engaged in the political debate online as much as he had always been part of the political debate in the traditional news uh, sense. And right up until only a few days before his passing, he was tweeting. I wanted to read just a handful of them. On February 25, because he doesn't pull any punches, Malcolm, in, real, in, in, in person or indeed online. Alarm over Abbott's view on Islam. Abbott, dangerous to harmony, peace, a destroyer of wisdom. Now, this is a man who doesn't, doesn't mind whether his view is going to be unpopular. He says, another tweet, for reason to raise women's pay that should make men happy. And that, of course, was about equal opportunity in the workplace and trying to ensure that more women are executives running com uh, companies because it, the studies show will, will uh, lift the profits. The government considers axing the Australian census to save money. The government has no idea what the nation should be. This is a man who continued to participate in the political debate right up until he died. And on Friday morning, when the news spread that Malcolm had passed away, there was an outpouring of sadness and loss not just in the traditional means, but also, of course, in the Twitter sphere. One, one person tweeted, I kind of expected Malcolm Fraser to continue sending wonderful, compassionate tweets forever. May he rest in peace. Sad to hear of Malcolm Fraser's passing, a true liberal and a force for a fairer, more compassionate Australia. The loss of Malcolm Fraser so soon after the death of Gough Whitlam is a double blow to Australia and its politics, both giants amongst men. Malcolm was a true leader of compassion, a man of conviction, who didn't mind that when he spoke, people may not like it, but he never wavered in what he thought was right. But he was always willing to listen if indeed his view was wrong. It strikes me that in this place and the other, that the words of Malcolm Fraser over these years, that the uh, courage, the political courage that he has shown, there is a lot that we could all learn. Yes, there is a debate about whether he left the Liberal Party or whether they left him. I don't think that really matters. I think that the history, history will remember Malcolm Fraser as a great man, a towering figure, a man of conviction, a towering figure in the life of our nation, who remained unwavering to the last possible opportunity in championing the protection 
and the dignity of the most vulnerable, both here and abroad. He wanted a nation to continue to change, to continue to grow, and he gave it absolutely everything that he had. And I would like to thank him for that. And just in summary, I would also like to thank his family, Tammy and his children and his grandchildren, for sharing their husband, their dad, their grandfather with our nation. Because politics, Malcolm Fraser says, life isn't meant to be easy. Politics is not easy. And this is a man who gave great sacrifice for building our country and making it a much better place. Thank you.